for years then we haven't even copyrighted our material we allow people to copy it to give it away that's what we want you creations don't even understand the second law of thermodynamics you guys yeah. shouldn't even use it because you don't understand it sometimes eric says it for me Welcome to Apologia, where a former Christian takes a look at the claims of Christians. If you find these videos helpful, why not hit subscribe now to make sure you don't miss anything. You know what I've spent my day doing so far all morning? Just as I uploaded my last video and started to think about my next, Eric Hoven took to Facebook to share his terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Went to Advanced Auto Parts and got a new oil filter for my car because... The oil needed changed. The pump over for the Genesis movie in the in the offices over there went bad. Lightning struck our our uh, modem, which ended up carrying from our modem through to our firewall at the ministry, and it took out our firewall. I'm sitting here with my hands up, going, "What's going on?" Ugh, I hate hate it when technology doesn't work properly. Intellectually, I know things go wrong, but it's super frustrating to deal with. Is Satan attacking you, Eric? I know in my old church, whenever technology went wrong, we would pray to bind Satan. The oil didn't get better by itself. It actually got worse. You know, we had electricity flowing to it. You would think with kind of the power going to it that adding that energy would actually organize and make sure the thing keeps working right. But, but no, it broke. Here once again, adding energy to a system did not help that system one bit. Oh wait, are we getting some kind of object lesson here? I can tell this is your sarcastic voice, but I can't quite figure out where your incredulity is pointed at just yet. I thought, you know, we live in a material world and if you just add energy, things get better by themselves. This doesn't seem to work that way. Okay, obviously Eric is misrepresenting some aspect of science, setting up some kind of straw man. But this is so far from any scientific claim I've ever heard, I genuinely cannot tell where he's going with this. But that's what they're teaching the 50 million young people today. Some molecules were struck by lightning, energy was added, and it turned into life. Now, they don't know how it happened or don't exactly understand it, but they're teaching that that's what happened. Oh, okay. So he's attempting to mock the concept of abiogenesis, the natural process by which life arose from non-living material. When Eric hears the word abiogenesis, it sounds like this is what he thinks of. He's right when he says that abiogenesis is not yet fully understood, though there are numerous hypotheses being tested and experimentation shows the natural emergence of basic chemicals of life, like amino acids and sugars, in a variety of conditions. Sure, each of these reactions would require an energy source, be it electrical, chemical, or thermal, but everything interesting that happens in our universe requires energy, from launching a rocket to taking a breath of air. Are you planning to mock every process that requires energy simply because it requires energy? Is it ironic that you're doing this while you're driving a car with a combustion engine? And why would you feel threatened by science discovering the nature of abiogenesis? The Bible you advocate clearly says that life arose from non-living things, God or not, we agreed that this happened, and there would have been a physical process. But abiogenesis isn't what was bugging my brain after your impromptu video. You do have a history of deliberately misunderstanding multiple areas of science at once. You would think with kind of the power going to it that adding that energy would actually organize and make sure the thing keeps working right. Yeah, that. Where have I heard that before? You know, if his theory is true, though, I should be able to set you on fire, add lots of energy, and, can, and make you even better arranged. You can imagine sticking a dead leaf down in the sun, <laughs> yeah. and when the sun's heated it up, what have you got? A hot, dead leaf. A hot, dead leaf. Nothing else. I could throw a hand grenade into a room. It's not going to clean the room up, That's is right. it? There we go. That sounds like the same line of reasoning. Can I say reasoning? Argument? Anyhow, let's rewind the tape to see what got the boys started. Dale has a question concerning the second law of thermodynamics. 
Ah uh, yes, the often thrown around second law of thermodynamics. You creationists don't even understand the second law of thermodynamics. You guys yeah. shouldn't even use it because you don't understand it. it. It probably is true that uh, some creationists have misused the second law of thermodynamics at some stages. Well, I think we should talk about the first law of thermodynamics. We should talk about the second law of thermodynamics Good as idea. well because they're related. <laughs> and, and people just don't understand these terms. I think that's fair to say. I've been researching this one for a long time. And the more I read, the more I listen, and the more I talk to scientists, the more I learn and there's definitely a lot of room for confusion. So before I throw back to the Creation Today team, let's get the second law of thermodynamics from some scientists. There's also the second law, which says that heat will spontaneously flow from something hotter to something colder, but it won't flow from something colder to something hotter. And that's because of this thing called entropy. Entropy is often described as the inherent disorder of a system. The more disordered the system, the higher its entropy. The second law introduces a new concept, entropy. Entropy is quite difficult to understand, but we can most easily describe entropy as disorder. And the second law states that the sum of the entropies of a system and its surroundings must always increase. In other words, the entropy or the disorder of the universe is always increasing. Heat will flow from a hot coffee cup into the table or your hand because the heat energy will be more disordered if more dispersed. This is why heat spontaneously flows from hot to cold and not the other way around, entropy. So the second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of the universe always increases. Now that doesn't mean that the change in entropy of a system cannot be negative. So the entropy of a system can still decrease as long as the entropy of the surroundings increases by a greater amount. And a more general way to state the second law of thermodynamics is that in real life, entropy can only increase overall. That doesn't mean that entropy can never decrease in certain situations, like gases do sometimes turn into liquids or solids, obviously. You've seen water vapor condense and liquid water freeze. But if the entropy in a system decreases, that means the entropy of the environment around the system must increase enough to compensate and then some, so that there's an overall increase in the entropy of the universe. Okay, now let's throw it back to creation today. It's therm thermodynamics, thermo meaning hot, if you don't Heat, drop it. Right. Not quite. Thermo doesn't mean hot, but relates to the concept of heat in general. It can equally apply to things that are cold or the transfer of heat energy. Thermo doesn't apply quantity, but pretty close. <laughs> and dynamics meaning work, so it's, uh, uh, the, it's a relationship energy, between yeah. heat and work. No, the first law does not say that heat and work are equivalent. In fact, they are the two distinct ways that energy can be transferred. The first law can be written like so. The change in the energy of a system is equal to the amount of work, W, done on or by the system, plus the amount of heat, Q, entering or leaving the system. There used to be some uh, old comic singers back in Britain who did a whole song called the Second Law Thermodynamics Song. But, so, really? Yeah, you can find, find, that, on, that, one find that on YouTube. I'll yeah, because they were hilarious. I'm sure it's as good as you're telling me it is. <laughs> All because of the Second Law of Thermodynamics, which lays down that you can't pass heat from a cooler to a hotter kind of like you far better. But the first law of thermodynamics is the idea that heat and work are equivalent. Wait, wait, wait. Did he just repeat the song lyrics? Heat is work and work is heat. Heat is work and work is heat. Very good. Did the man who just said people misunderstand this concept get his understanding from a comedy song? Hmm. I wonder what science mysteries Weird Al Yankovic has already solved. They took a donor's body, fell and fertilized a human egg, and so I say, I think I'm a clone now. There we go, science. Let's get on producing that copy of me. I always thought I'd die at the hands of my own clone. Well, that's why you have to brand the number two into your clone's cheek. You shouldn't have a clone if you don't know that. That's mm -hmm. what the second law of thermodynamics is about, which says that entropy is constantly increasing, that in every energy change there is always some wasted energy. That's pretty good. One more time for safety. The second law of thermodynamics, if uh, energy is changed from one form to another, during that change, some energy is going to be wasted, Lost, yeah. uh, uh, usually in the form of low temperature heat. OK, some subtleties aside, I think we're on the same page on the second law of thermodynamics. So where is the confusion crept in? See, evolution clearly defies the second law of thermodynamics. Correct. That, uh, what? Evolution doesn't fit with that. No, it goes against it, actually. And it is a valid point to say, look, you don't start with rock and get human beings without going against the second law of thermodynamics. How so? 
The law states merely that no energy conversion mechanism is perfect. Are you injecting a non-related definition of disorder to confuse your viewers? The second law of thermodynamics talks about increasing disorder. disorder. And so what we've said is that evolution doesn't fit with that. I think you're trying to falsely equivocate your audience's perception of order as a deliberate arrangement for a purpose when disorder in thermodynamics is used in relation to entropy, which has a precise scientific definition and measurement. That is not analogous to the positioning of the various um, uh, proteins D and yeah. ba base groups in DNA. It's Correct. not analogous to that. Okay, good. I'm glad we agree that anyone saying it's the same would be dishonest. So are you saying there isn't enough energy available to accomplish the work that evolution has done? What would a scientist say? Now here's what the atheists say. They'll say, oh, well, those laws only apply to a, a closed system. And we are an open system. We've got energy coming in from the sun, so th because we're an open system, those laws don't apply. Yes. Close. The law applies to all systems. If we want to get into semantics, there are actual scientific definitions of isolated systems, closed systems, and open systems. It's an isolated system, one where neither energy nor matter enter or leave, where entropy always increases over time. The Earth is a system where, as you point out, energy is constantly being added from the sun. So while processes on Earth are imperfect at converting energy, processes of life continue because the energy being added is greater than the energy being lost to imperfection. So you've got the sun, but you see the sun's energy is not, you can't just utilize it, you can't just <laughs> pour energy in. Adding energy is destructive without a complex mechanism to harness that energy. And it just so happens that we have mechanisms to do this. The primary one is called photosynthesis. Plants convert energy from the sun into stored organic energy that is in turn used by animals. So I hope this clears up any false links you may have heard between the second law of thermodynamics and biological evolution. Be it a mistaken conflation of thermodynamic disorder and the semantic ordering of life, or any idea that the energy from the sun isn't adequate for life. All of Eric's ridiculous examples about applying energy directly to leaves or pumps or modems without a conversion mechanism are completely inappropriate analogy. And I suspect he knows it. To actually get the chemicals being produced, you need information. And yeah, and life, plant life, information. So yeah. with, with that example... Oops, you accidentally gave the right answer again, Eric. Quick, change the subject. Well, it is not a clear... And by the way, when you, when you go outside of, uh, of our Earth, the universe as a whole would have to be considered a closed by system. By definition, it's a closed system. Correct. There's nothing outside it. The universe is indeed an isolated system. That is correct. Cosmologists and astronomers suggest it may continue to expand forever, but anyone watching this will be long gone before we lose sight of the other galaxies. But while we're here and off topic, let's cycle back to that first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics proves that matter is eternal, that it was never created and that it will never be destroyed. If you take God out of the equation, you must have matter itself be eternal. Matter is now your God. So you're not at all an atheist by any stretch of the imagination. You've just put God-like properties on matter itself. Yes. Allowed matter to create things, allowed matter to exist forever. These are properties of God. Yes. So. To be sure, we have no idea what things were like before the origin of time and space with the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago, if such an idea of before the creation of time has any meaning at all. But that first law of thermodynamics sure does seem to lend credence to the idea that the universe is merely the current arrangement of matter and energy, and that other configurations of matter and energy may have existed before us, and will again after us. If something has to be eternal, which is more likely? That the eternal thing is the tangible matter and energy that we know exists and we cannot destroy, or to insist that the eternal thing is a god that we cannot be certain even exists? Certainly energy and matter is one fewer assumption. And speaking of God, I can't help but think about something you said earlier, Eric. Lightning struck our, our uh, modem, which ended up carrying from our modem through to our firewall at the ministry, and it took out our firewall. Now, when does God usually strike something with lightning? And may God strike me down were it to be otherwise. Don't stand there, Gorbin! Oh, you've never seen the end of God before! Do you know anyone who's confused about the second law of thermodynamics? Please share this video with them. It's my goal to reach those who, like myself until recently, didn't have enough information about such things. I hope it helps. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and let me know about your thermodynamic adventures in the comments below. Later.